Hello class. Today I'd like to go over test 6-2 review. Okay, we have a test tomorrow, so if you can do everything on this test review, then this test should be really pretty simple. So our test, the first concept on the test is simplifying radicals. So if you remember radicals, what we do is we break the number down using prime factorization, and then we pull out, if it's a square root, we pull out pairs. If it's a cube root, we pull out three of a kinds and so on and so forth. So let's see if we can do a few of these and then we will uh, move on to the next section. So in this first one, we know 180. Well, it's gonna break down into 18 and 10. Okay. <clears throat> now, the 18 and the 10, they both can break down even further. So this 18 will break down into nine times two, which we know the nine will break into three times three and then the two. The 10 will break down into two times five. So what we really have is two threes, two twos, and a five for 180. Now for a square root, what we're looking for is when we have that radical where we would have the, the two threes, the two twos, and the five, <clears throat> we're looking for two of a kinds. And if there's a two of a kind inside the radical, if you remember correctly, it will jump out. So that means I'll have a single three on the outside. I also have a single two on the outside, okay, because there's another two that will jump out. Now that five doesn't have a friend that can jump out with, so we leave the five underneath. Now if you remember correctly, our steps were, we break our number down, we pull out our pairs, and then any numbers that we have on the outside, we put those together with multiplication. So three times two is six, and whatever's left on the inside, we put it together with multiplication, and we just leave it under the radical. So we would end up with six times the square root of five. Okay, so let me erase some of this, okay, and then we'll do the next one. <clears throat> now, 196, well, I don't know right off the top of my head which will go, what will go into 196, but I do know that 196 is an even number, so I could divide that by two. And if I divide it by two, I end up with 98 times two, okay? Well, my 98, again, I don't have in my mind a number that will give me 98, so I just divide it by two again, okay? And I find out that 98 times, or 98 divided by two gives me 49. Right? And then I bring this two down. <clears throat> now, so that tells me that I've got a two and a two, and then this 49, it's now to a point where I, I know what will, break, what will break 49 down, and I know that's gonna be seven times seven. Right. So it breaks down into the seven and seven. <clears throat> so underneath my radical, I have a pair of twos that will jump out and a pair of sevens that will jump out. So there's a two on the outside, there's a seven on the outside, and there's nothing left under my radical. So if I don't have anything left under my radical, I just don't write it. And I put together the numbers on the outside, which is two and seven, which will give me just 14. The square root of 96 is what we call a perfect square. Okay, so the rest of these, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write down what they break into, okay, the final row, and then we'll talk about what the answer is gonna be. So again, the first one was six times the square root of five. The second one was 14. Now, 135, or 13,500, I know that's gonna be 135 times 100. Okay, so what this one will actually break down into is <clears throat> the square root of, or the cube root of, excuse me, cube root of three times three times three times five times five times five times two times two. Okay, so that's what our final row would be. Now, since there's a little three in here that we're doing the third root, <coughs> or the cube root, I'm looking for three of a kind. So there's a three of a kind here that will jump out. There's a three of a kind here that will jump out. So I end up with three times five times the square root of two times two. Now, we take the numbers on the outside, we put those together with multiplication to get 15, and we put the two numbers together on the inside back together to get four. Now, if you give me that as your answer, I'm gonna count it wrong, because that says 15 times the square root of four. If I'm looking for a cube root, you must put the little three as your root, all right? Now, number four, when you break it down, you end up with Two times two times two times two times three times three. Okay, so this one, I'm looking for a square root again, two of a kind. So I've got a pair of twos, a pair of twos, and a pair of threes, which give me just plain old 12. 
Okay. Now, for number five, we're looking for a fifth root. Okay, so this one, I'll come way down here on the bottom. I'm looking for a fifth root. And we should end up with two times two times two times two times two times three. <clears throat> so if you were to multiply eight times four times three, you'll get 96. So in this particular one, I'm looking for five of a kinds. So there's my five two, so they come out. I'm left with a single three underneath my radical. And then I put my little five down for the fifth root. Okay, now 648. Okay, again, this one, I'm looking for a fourth root. And what you find out here is that it breaks down into three times three times three times three times two times two times two. Okay, so do we have a fourth root? Yes, we've got four threes that can jump out. I've got three twos that are left underneath the radical. So when I put those back together, I get an eight and it's to the fourth root. So your answer would be three times the fourth root of eight. And so that's how we simplify radicals. That's what we do. So that's the first part of your test. The second part of your test is dealing with polynomials. Okay. So this first section is just classifying is the thing you see there. Is it a monomial, binomial, trinomial, or not one? <clears throat> now we know a monomial is just a single term. So a, by definition, it is either a number or a, the product of numbers and variables. Okay, now those variables have to have whole number exponents. That variable cannot be part of a denominator in a fraction. It cannot be underneath a radical. Okay, so those are some of the instances that we could have that it would not be any kind of a polynomial. So let's take a look at this. This first one, we have a monomial plus another monomial, which makes that a binomial. Okay, number eight has a monomial, a monomial, and a monomial separated by plus or minus. All my exponents are whole numbers. So this is a trinomial. Okay, a trinomial, because there's three terms. And number 19, now just because this is a square root doesn't automatically uh, negate it, okay? This is square root of a number, it's just a number. So that's perfectly fine. Okay, so this one is a monomial because it is a single term. Then number 10 is a little different. Number 10, we can actually break this apart. Some of the things that we don't sometimes understand that we can do, but you can break this one apart into x or four over five plus x over five. So I can break that down and this now becomes two terms, which is a binomial. Okay. Number seven, we've got no plus or minus. Our exponents on our variables are whole numbers because they're both gonna be ones. Okay, so this is a monomial. Okay, number 12. Now this one has a variable in the denominator. Okay, that is a no-no. So this one is not one. Not a polynomial. Okay, number 13, same thing. We have a variable under the radical, which ends up making that variable have an exponent that is a fraction. Like on number 12, if it's in the denominator, it has a exponent that is a negative value. So we can't have those. So number 13 is also not one. And then number 14, there's no plus or minus. So this is a monomial. All right, so far so good. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to the next section then. The next section, we're looking for degree of polynomial. Okay, degree of polynomial, what we do is we look at, in a monomial, we look at the exponents on the variables. Okay, so if it's a single variable, it has an exponent of one, because there's no exponent there, so that means this one's to the first degree. Okay, now if we have a monomial that has multiple variables, we add the exponents together. So this one's a two, this one's a one, so that makes this one to the third degree. Okay, now if we have a, uh, a series of monomials, like in this trinomial, it's the biggest one wins. So we find the degree of this monomial, which is two, find the degree of this monomial, which is one, and the degree of this monomial is zero. A constant value has a degree of zero. So it's the biggest one wins. So in 17, it's to the second. Okay, now if we have just a number, like we did in this one, it has a degree of zero. So 18 has to the zeroth degree. <coughs> and number 19, we talked about if it is zero, 
and it has no degree. Okay, and then number 20, this one is four, this one is five, biggest one wins, so it's to the fifth degree. So that's how we find degree. And then the last thing in this particular test is dealing with adding and subtracting polynomials. And we remember that there is a process, a three-step process. Step number one, look inside your parentheses. If it's plus, we're good. Look inside here, plus, it's good. Okay, step number one is checked. Step number two, look in the middle. If it's plus, then my parentheses drop away and I add like terms. Okay, so I've got 3x and x, which make 4x, plus 9 and 5, which make 14. All right, now this one, okay, we go inside the parentheses. We got a minus, uh oh, so I change that. Now there's not a parentheses here, but there is a minus. So we change that minus to plus next to its opposite. Okay, and we change the very next term, whatever that is, to its opposite. Now in this one, we just had a single term, okay? So now we combine like terms. So I see, do I have, I've got 16x here. Do I have any other x's that can go with that? I've got the negative 5x. So that gives me 11x plus, and then I have a negative 9y and a positive 3y, which gives me a negative 6y. Okay, number 23. Okay, we come down here, we look in the parentheses. So we change our, our minus there. Come over to the next set, change our minus here. We look in the middle, it's plus, so now I combine like terms. So I've got an a cubed and a 3a cubed, which gives me 4a cubed, plus, now I look at b cubed. Do I have any b cubes? I got two of them here. So negative one and two make one b cubed, or just b cubed, plus, now they're gone. Okay, now I look for, can I go to the next thing? My next thing is the 2a squared b. I don't have anything that goes with that, so 2a squared b, and then plus negative b squared, all right? Now, number 24, okay, this set of parentheses is good. This one's not, so I change this. I look at my plus, it's good. I combine like terms. 3a and 2a make 5a, plus 5b and negative 9b make negative 4b, all right? Now we start with some minuses, but there's a minus in the middle. So I look at my parentheses, good. I look at my parentheses, good. So now if this is minus in the middle, we change subtraction to addition and everything in the next set of parentheses to its opposite. So this 4x becomes negative 4x, the three becomes negative. Now I'm ready to combine like terms. 9x and negative 4x make 5x plus five and negative three make two. Okay, same thing on number 26. So we're good here, we're good here, so not good here. So I change minus to plus, the three turns negative, the seven turns negative. Now I look for my x squareds. So I've got one x squared here, I've got negative three x squared here. So that gives me a negative two x squared plus. So my x squareds are gone. I've got a six x, do I have any other x's? No, so I just write my six x down and then I write the negative seven down. Okay, number 27. Okay, so, oh, we got a minus here. So I changed my parentheses. This parentheses is okay. So now I come in the middle. I change my minus to plus. My negative three becomes positive. My positive two becomes negative. Now we start combining. So I've got a five x squared. Do I have any other x squareds? Nope. So five x squared plus, okay, so it's gone. I've got an x y. So here's a negative four. Here's a positive three. So that makes me have a negative one x y or just negative x y. So they're gone. And then plus negative two y squared. And then last but not least, number 28. So I see I've got a minus here I need to change. Got a minus here I need to change. Then the minus in the middle. And then each of the elements after that I change. So I've got a 6a squared and a negative 2a squared. So that's 4a squared. So my a squareds are gone. And I've got a 7ab and a negative 3ab. So that's 4ab. And then negative three b squared and positive b squared give me a negative two b squared. So if you can do all of the contents of this test review, the radicals, break them down, simplify them, and each of the sections of polynomials, then you should be able to do very well in this test. I wish you the best of luck. Until next time.